Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel. I'm Ashley, or known around the internet as Math with Ash. Today, my goal is to tell you everything that I know about vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So let's get to it. So I think a good introductory example to asymptotes is this function, because maybe you haven't seen asymptotes before, but you've probably seen this function. So you can see this kind of interesting behavior that's happening, where as we take our x's to positive infinity, our function is getting really, really close to the x-axis, but it's never touching it. And the same thing is happening if we take our x's to negative infinity. Our function is getting really, really close to the x-axis, but it's never touching this. We also have this weird behavior as we take our x's towards zero, right? So as we take our x's towards zero, our function is getting really, really close to our y-axis, right? So you can see that here and here. So our x-axis is an asymptote, but we're not going to write our asymptote as explicitly the x-axis. An asymptote is the equation of a line. So the equation of this line is going to be y is equal to zero. This line goes through our y-axis at zero. The equation is y is equal to zero. Similarly, our y-axis, we were also saying, is an asymptote, but we're going to write this with the equation of a line. It's going through our x-axis at zero. This is the line x is equal to zero. Another helpful example, I think, to get you used to thinking about asymptotes is taking this exact graph and just shifting it. So grabbing that graph and shifting it up or right or down or left, giving it some shifts so you can see asymptotes that aren't exactly the x-axis and the y-axis. So the graph on the right is an example of this. So you can see from our original graph that I've shifted it right to. So if I shifted it right to, then our vertical asymptote is going to go from being x equal to zero two being x is equal to two. So we've shifted our graph right two and then up three. So this up three is going to give us our new horizontal asymptote. Before it was y equals zero. Now it's going to be y is equal to three. So just taking a step back, you can see how these asymptotes work. So our functions are going to get really, really close to these lines, these vertical and horizontal asymptotes, but they're never going to actually cross these asymptotes or touch them. So here I've just written that out. This is just a really general definition of an asymptote, a straight line that a function approaches but never touches. Here's our definition of a vertical asymptote. This is a pretty technical definition, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, but you can see that it makes sense in context with these couple of examples that I'm going to show you. So first of all, a vertical asymptote is going to be written like this, x is equal to a, because a vertical asymptote is a vertical line after all. So we write this as the equation of a line. And when you write the equation of a vertical line, it's going to be x is equal to whatever number it hits on our x-axis, right? It's going through our x-axis, x is equal to whatever number it's hitting on that x-axis. So our vertical line, x is equal to a, is in fact a vertical asymptote if the function approaches positive or negative infinity as our x approaches a from the left or the right. Let me show you what this means. These are a couple examples of vertical asymptotes. Let's see how they satisfy our definition. So for the one on the left, you can see that as our x's are getting really, really close to a on our function, our function is tending towards infinity. And so there's never going to be an f of a value, right? It just doesn't exist. We're getting really, 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 really close to this asymptote, but we're never going to actually touch it. Similarly, on the right, we can see that as our function approaches a from the right, our function is tending towards negative infinity. It's never going to actually touch that asymptote. It's just going to get really close to it. All right, here's our definition for horizontal asymptote. So a horizontal line is going to have this construction, right? A horizontal line is going to look something like this. It's going through our y-axis at a certain point. And so the equation of that line is going to be y is equal to whatever value it's passing. So a horizontal line is, in fact, a horizontal asymptote if our function approaches b as x approaches either positive or negative infinity. Here are our examples. So on the left, you can see that as our x's are going towards negative infinity and positive infinity, our function is approaching this y is equal to b value. Never touches it, never crosses it but it approaches this asymptote. And then a similar thing is happening on the right. As our x's are going towards negative infinity, as our x's are going towards positive infinity, our function is approaching this y is equal to b line, never crossing it, never touching it, it's an asymptote. Now that we know what vertical and horizontal asymptotes are, how they're defined, we need to figure out how I can calculate what the vertical and horizontal asymptotes are. So typically when you're talking about vertical and horizontal asymptotes in a math class, you're talking about them in the context of a rational function. So a rational function is pretty much defined as two polynomials divided by each other. So don't let this notation scare you right here. This on the top and the bottom is just notation for a polynomial. So to find our vertical asymptotes, here's our key. We need to solve q of x is equal to zero, or basically set the denominator of our rational function equal to zero. 
do some algebra, do some calculations, and find out what x is equal to, right? And that's the form of our vertical asymptotes, x is equal to something. This little footnote right here is just saying that in your rational function, sometimes you have roots that are in the top. So maybe I have like x plus 3 in the top and x plus 3 in the bottom, and then the rest of my equation. This will cancel, right? And so when we're calculating our vertical asymptotes, we want to not include this in our calculation. So we're going to set everything else in the denominator equal to zero, not this thing that cancels. As a fun fact, this thing that cancels is going to create what we call a hole in our graph. So very fun. Here's the key for finding our horizontal asymptotes. So it's a little bit more involved, but what we're pretty much doing is comparing the degree of the numerator of a rational function to the degree of the denominator of a rational function. What's the degree? Well, it's the term that has the highest power in our polynomial. So the highest power in our numerator versus the highest power in our denominator. So if you refer back to what we have up here, you can see that n is going to be the highest degree in our numerator, m is going to be the highest degree in our denominator. So right here is saying if the degree of our numerator is less than the degree of our denominator, then our horizontal asymptote is going to be y is equal to zero. And if you'll recognize from the example we did earlier, this is just the x-axis. So that's the first case. The second case is if you have the degree of the numerator being equal to the degree of the denominator. So if this is the case, then what you're going to do is pull the coefficients from those highest degree terms and do the coefficient of the numerator highest term divided by the coefficient of the denominator highest term. So you can see we've written that as y is equal to an over bn. In our last case, the degree of our numerator is greater than the degree of our denominator. We're actually not going to have any horizontal asymptotes. We might have what we call an oblique or a slant asymptote which, as you might imagine, is going to have a slant to it. And the way you determine what the equation of this oblique slant asymptote is, is you do polynomial division of your rational function. So you do your numerator divided by your denominator, and whatever your answer is, you basically ignore the remainder and look at the equation of the line that you have. That's the equation of your oblique asymptote. So for this first one, you can see that we have a rational function, a polynomial in our top and a polynomial in our bottom. Let's first think about our vertical asymptotes. So our key up there told us that we need to set our denominator equal to zero and solve for x. So if we do that, we're gonna have two x squared plus three x minus two is equal to zero. On our left looks like a quadratic function, and so there's lots of different ways you could solve this. You could use the quadratic equation, you could plug this on a graph and see where it intercepts the x-axis, you could factor. I'm gonna choose to factor here. So. The way that I always think about factoring is I think about my a times my c, and so 2 times negative 2 is going to give me negative 4, my b is 3. I'm thinking about what pair of numbers is going to multiply to a negative 4 but add to a 3. So what's going to do that? I think 4 and negative 1, and then I notice that I have a coefficient, and so I'm not done yet. What I actually need to do is divide by that coefficient right here, and I'm going to get x plus 2. You could swing this if you want, but because we're solving this, I'm just going to leave it as this. x minus 1 half is equal to 0. And then we set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. So x plus 2 is equal to 0 is going to give me x is equal to negative 2. And then x minus 1 half equal to 0. If I solve that, it's going to give me 1 half. And so these are two vertical asymptotes. x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 1 half. All right, for our horizontal asymptote, we compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. So the degree comes from the term with the highest power. So you can see in both our numerator and our denominator that this degree is 2. When these degrees are equal, what do we do? Well, we take the coefficients of those leading terms and divide them. So we'll get that our horizontal asymptote is 3 over 2. Let's try this next one. So for the vertical asymptotes, we take our denominator and we set it equal to 0. This kind of looks like a factoring problem. So on my left, what I can do is I can factor an x on both of those terms, and that leaves me with x times x plus 3, and this puts me in a really great spot to solve because I can set x equal to 0, and I'm going to get that x is equal to 0. And then I set my other factor, x plus 3 equal to 0, and solve, and then I'm going to get that x is equal to negative 3. So those are my two vertical asymptotes. For the horizontal asymptotes, again, we compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. In this case, it looks like the degree of our numerator is 1, which is less than the degree of our denominator. So what do we do in this case? Well, our horizontal asymptote is going to be y is equal to 0 or the x-axis. For our last example, let's do the same thing. So for our vertical asymptote, we are going to set the denominator equal to 0. Why don't I add 4 to both sides? I'm going to get that x squared is equal to 4. 
I take the square root, and remember both the positive and the negative. The square root of four is gonna be positive and negative two. And those are my two vertical asymptotes. For the horizontal asymptote, we actually have that last case where the degree of our numerator is greater than the degree of our denominator. So we don't have a horizontal asymptote, but we might have an oblique asymptote. So let's go crazy and do some polynomial division to figure out the equation of that oblique asymptote is. So to set up our polynomial division, what I'm gonna do is have x cubed minus two x squared. And we don't have a term that just has x in it, but I'm gonna use a placeholder of zero x plus three just as kind of a step when you do polynomial division. All right, we ask ourselves, x squared times what is gonna give me x cubed? Well, x squared times x is gonna give me x cubed. So I'm gonna place an x above here, and then I'm gonna subtract x squared minus four times x. So x squared minus four times x is gonna give me x cubed minus four x, and I'm subtracting that, so this will cancel. I'll get minus two x squared plus four x, plus three. Now I'm asking myself, x squared times what is gonna give me minus two x squared? That's just minus two, right? So I'm gonna put a minus two in my ones column, and then I'm going to subtract x squared minus four times minus two. I could keep going and figure out what my remainder is, but we've actually got the equation of our line right here. So the equation of our oblique asymptote is y is equal to x minus two. There you go. So these examples kind of show every possible case you could have with vertical and horizontal asymptotes, but let's graph them just to make sure that we've done them right. Okay, so for the first one, you can see that our function is graphed here in blue and our asymptotes are in red. So our vertical asymptotes we got that were negative two and one half look like vertical asymptotes, right? Our function is getting really, really close to both of those. And then our horizontal asymptote is y is equal to three over two. And you can see that as our x goes to positive infinity, our function does in fact approach that. All right, for our second problem, you can see again our function graphed in blue, the asymptotes in red, and it looks like our asymptotes are checking out, the vertical ones being zero and negative three, and the horizontal one being our x-axis. Finally, our last function, which is perhaps the most interesting because we have our vertical asymptotes, we have our slant asymptotes here. So you can see how a slant asymptote works, how our function gets really, really close to this y is equal to x minus two line as our x's go to negative infinity and positive infinity. All right, I hope this video has been helpful. We went through the definitions of asymptotes, both horizontal and vertical asymptotes, how you find them when looking at a rational function, and then some examples that cover pretty much everything that you could see or that would be thrown at you for these asymptotes. If you like this video, consider dropping an actual like down below. Maybe subscribe if you're feeling it, if you're not subscribed already. And thanks for watching. Comment down below what kind of videos you'd like to see. I like this rational function thinking that we've been doing. We could do other videos on how to find the x-intercepts and y-intercepts and find a lot more things about rational functions if you guys would be interested in that. But just let me know all your comments, thoughts, and concerns, and I'll see you later.